All right, can you hear me and see my screen? Yes. It's not okay. full screen yet. Um, is that better? Or I like to keep I the left side. I still side. see the thumbnails on the side. Is that what you want? Oh, yeah. OK, <laughs> then you're good. I will tell you when you are at, do you want a warning or just at 15 minutes? Warning. You want a warning? I'll give you a warning at 12. Thank you. Okay, so um, when I asked Lauren if I had one hour or 45 minutes for this talk, she told me that I had 15 minutes. So um, I guess this was a good thing. It made me um, start to focus on you know what is really important about uh, the process of applying to grad school. And it reminded me of uh, when Feynman was asked, you know, if in one phrase to give the most information to you know, future generations. And you know, if I had to provide a statement from which you can reconstruct um, you know, everything about how to apply to grad school, is that admissions committees aim to minimize risk. And you know, our institutions have many processes to do this. Um, risk is expensive. So I have three steps uh, to apply to grad school. Um, I guess decide where to apply, apply, then decide where to go. Um, what I will say is apply to about seven programs and do not apply to more than nine. If you have more than nine programs that you want to apply to is because you haven't thought hard enough. And it's better to have this problem at the beginning, you know, it's like, oh, I have to reduce my space to uh, have it at the end when you have been accepted to 20 programs and, you know, spent a lot of money and it is going to increase confusion. So it's better to have, uh, you know, a relatively short list uh, at the beginning. I will say uh, apply to two rich programs, three good fit programs, and two just in case programs, and add one or two if you can really justify it. And to know if a program is rich, good fit, or just in case, you should talk to people. Talk to your mentors, talk to your peers, uh, talk to people in those programs. So uh, that you have, a, you know, again, you, you're also trying to minimize uh, risk. And in order to decrease the number of programs, you can start uh, setting or applying constraints to your search. So region, you know, if you want to be in Texas or in the I don't know, Northwest or something, uh, the setting, if you want something urban or not, uh, the specialty, you know, do they actually have the kind of research that you want to do, um, and so on. And you know, at the end, if you're not too sure about what other constraints to add, um, then just add constraints randomly until you get to nine or seven. Um, also look at particular groups within the programs that you're interested in, but the research that you really wanna do or that you really find uh, really exciting might be beyond uh, traditional divisions. So the application will minimally consist of a transcript, a statement of purpose, and three or more letters of recommendation. Back in the day, I guess before COVID, programs requested uh, GREs, uh, standardized or, I mean, a uh, general or subject uh, that seems to be uh, milling down. Other applications might request other information, a resume, a diversity statement, personal history, etc. cetera. Um, the main thing is that the documents in your application should tell a consistent story. You want to have enough overlap between the material that you're submitting, your letters, your statement of purpose, that they support each other, but not so much that you're just you're sending the same information over and over and over again. So here I have a description of how the admissions committee uh, works, and there's going to be some you know, relatively minor variations. Uh, but in general, the uh, uh, at least one person is going to pay a lot of attention to your application and likely is going to be more. The number of admission offers typically are decided beforehand. 
and they're based on uh, historical data or you know whether they have they are expecting to grow you know, that particular program and uh, the committee will typically move in stages so you know first they might look at all the applications uh, with not a lot of uh, of detail and you know pick the ones that are obvious choices and then move from there and there's a lot of information there but uh, I'll just um, make my slides available so something very important to keep in mind is that graduate student is a job and a graduate school application is a job application is different than a university application or college application in which you are paying for a service. OK, uh, for grad school, you're going to get paid. So uh, you are applying for a job. The job of the graduate student in STEM is to do research. So the purpose of the application is to show that you are prepared to do research. Uh, with previous research experience, you know, with potential to uh, move into you know, new areas or areas that you're already specializing in. You want to show that you can do research. The letters of recommendation should be ideally from people that you have collaborated on in research projects. So collaborate with on research projects. Um, it's very difficult when you know you have been the instructor for one class and the student asks you for a letter of recommendation. You know, there's not much you can say. You can say, you know, the student participated in class, you know, got a good grade. But you know, really, in order to write a good letter, you should have worked uh, with the student. So ask the recommender if they can do this. Your statement of purpose should be about your research skills and how they will benefit ideally particular research groups in the program. Uh, but also, you know, more generally, how will your skills uh, support the research programs? Other things matter also, obviously, you know, we're not one dimensional beings uh, to stay, but you know, they all support you, know, you being successful in the program. So good grades mean that you can concentrate long-term, that you take uh, your, your classes seriously, that you can take projects seriously, that you can satisfy a variety of whimsical professor personalities. Uh, you know, some professors are going to, uh, you know, be, super social and they will have like project-based learning and like all these you know new things and then other professors are going to have like one final you know and put all the pressure on on you and you know these are different extremes when you get good grades it means that you can uh, uh you're flexible enough so it matters um participation in student uh, groups you know church activities science outreach is important because uh it tells the committee well, I guess it's important in life generally, but uh, it shows the committee that uh, you have the social skills that are necessary to you know, keep yourself uh, afloat um, mentally during, the, uh, during, the pro during your PhD. Um, showing that you're knowledgeable about their program by reaching out to specific research groups and asking uh, specific questions about the research directions and then writing that, in your, uh, including that in your statement of purpose means that you're serious about the program. You know that I always I always like uh, when I see that in a in a in a letter statement of purpose that people have done their their homework. So I've written letters for MIT and what I like about them is that they ask specific questions rather than you know just requesting a letter of recommendation. And I think this helps because um, some recommenders might not be, you know, as good at writing letters as others. And so this kind of um, um, normalizes everything. And I think it provides uh, more opportunities for students. So the quality of the applicant's intellect, academic work, and research ability is kind of the first question, and that is the most important. Personality and social skills. Yeah, nobody wants to work with a jerk. Community institution and background, so that the uh, admissions committee can understand uh, where you're coming from. Uh, the resilience, you know, you have to don't think that you're going to get accepted because you're resilient, but resilience is necessary to uh, succeed in grad school, so show it. 
And what makes the application, uh, the applicant memorable? Uh, I think that's a very good question. You know, it's a, it's an element of surprise. Uh, it provides information that makes that individual, that applicant um, unique. So here I have a figure that I created for uh, a blog post that I wrote a long time ago. It's about how science works. And this is uh, uh, a base theorem. So a base theorem tells you how to update the probability that you assign to an event given some information. So um, A in this case can be a hypothesis. The hypothesis in this case is that you're a good fit for this program. And B is the evidence for that. So here is um, a, a coin toss, um, I guess, experiment before, and you want to determine if this coin, to if this coin is um, biased or not. So before you uh, toss the coin for the first time, you don't know anything about it. So you have a uniform probability distribution. After you toss it 10 times, you get the, you know, some 80% of the time you're going to get um, tails and 20% uh, heads or so on. So after 10 tosses, you have the red probability distribution. And after 100 tosses, you can be pretty sure that this coin is biased. So everything that you submit to the committee should improve your chances, should give more information uh, about your, your abilities. So here I have something about entropy. This is information entropy. Uh, it's a measure of surprise. So what does information do? It removes uncertainty. When you remove uncertainty, surprise uh, is yielded. So information entropy has some interesting um, characteristics or properties. The first one is that if something is certain, there's no surprise and there's no information. So I have a, an example here of what will be a no surprise event. I got a telescope for my birthday and then dissected an ant and now I want to do exobiology. And it's kind of crazy how many statements of purpose begin you know, with some variation of that. Don't, you don't need to put that. If you're applying for a, a graduate program in science, you already, you know, you had an experience like this. Everybody had it. And so, you know, unless, unless you think that it makes a difference from everybody else, it, there, there's no need to say it. Um, there's also... We're at, we're at 12 minutes, Jorge. Thank you. I think we're going well. Infinite surprise for impossible events. So if you say that you're the smartest person in the whole damn world, you are not going to have credibility. So don't say things that, you know, uh, along that vein. Uh, number three, I have a decent academic preparation like almost every other applicant. That's good, but it doesn't provide that much information. Uh, four, you know, I published a research paper while being part of the Italian gymnastics Olympic team. And I'm not, I'm, I didn't make that one up. I reviewed an NSF um, graduate fellowship that was like that. That is really good. So you, it makes you unique and uh, along two different axes. And you know, it's uh, probability uh, entropy is continuous. So if your GPA is 3.9 or 3.8, it's not going to make a huge difference. But if it's 2.8, it will. So the information that you send to the committee should be about what makes you better qualified or at least different than other applicants. When you write your statement of purpose and in the letters of recommendation, you should not state these facts. You should demonstrate them by telling stories about how you are you know, a really good experimentalist or you came up with this new research direction. Demonstrate it. Do not just state it. And you know, once you uh, get accepted, you decide where to go. We've seen in person the institutions that accepted you, at least the ones that you're really interested in. Talk to potential advisors over there, graduate students. And you know, consider how much they're going to pay you. I guess that is starting to be um, important. And you should be grateful that you only applied to nine programs because all of them accepted you. Thank you.